Well, this is something I've wanted to try for a long time, and it relates to weed control. Now, historically, I have used, particularly for my areas of gravel and where I have weeds coming up in between my pavers and my bricks, historically, I have used just boiling water, and it works pretty effectively. And yes, this was made by my boys when they were little, and I still have it to this day. So I've got some boiling water here, and it's a pretty effective weed control for when you have, oh, different things growing up in cracks and crevices. And even though it's, it is effective, it typically, especially this time of year, it requires multiple <coughs> applications and it's also a little bit steamy to be heating up a teapot and bringing it out here. And it can be rather impractical for large areas. So instead, I am going to try something I've wanted to try for a long time, and that is using horticultural grade or very strong vinegar. And this is my question of the day. Have you guys tried using vinegar as a weed control? And what strength do you use? Do you use just regular household vinegar? Or do you get something more high powered like this 45% concentrated industrial strength vinegar I bought this online. Now, as kind of a, a precaution, I would say if you are very sensitive to strong smells like this vinegar, I have a niece who is very sensitive to these kind of smells, or if in any way you would be for any reason sensitized to using a high grade vinegar like this, you may not want to do this, or you may want to wear a, fast, a face mask or something that will prevent the full strength of it from really going into up your nose and into your olfactory senses. So that is something to keep in mind. But I got this, and on the back, it says it is, or on the front, it says that it's nine times stronger than regular household vinegar. It's equivalent to nine gallons of vinegar, sewer and septic safe. And by the way, I have tried pouring some of this down my kitchen sink to see if it, it is effective in kind of getting out some wonky smells. But it will tell you on here exactly what proportions you need to use for various different applications. So for laundry, mildew, and grime, and in this case, as a horticultural strength vinegar for weed control. So this makes two gallons of something that would be very, would be very strong. I, however, don't need nearly that quantity. And it also tells you what to mix it with. It tells you to mix it with some salt and also with a surfactant. Um, and I just use kind of a dishwashing liquid. And it will tell you exactly what um, what amounts to use. Now, I found after doing it once, I didn't need to do it at the, at the strength it told me. I, I diluted it a bit. Now, this gives you per gallon measurements, so you have to convert that into a metric if you are using something that is based on liter measurements, like this Centurion sprayer or just one of these pump sprayers. Roughly, it calculates to uh, oh, about four liters in a gallon, but just use your, um, your phone or some other kind of conversion method to help you equate one to the other. So I mixed some up. I did not really use any salt because I was afraid what that might do to any surrounding plants. So I didn't use any salt. I just used the vinegar, some of that dishwashing liquid and water, and I mixed it up accordingly into this Centurion battery operated sprayer. Now, if you're someone who has um, arthritis in your hands or has a lot of spraying to do, then I really love this. We did a sponsorship for this. I think it was last year or year before that, and I continue to use it. I absolutely love it. It does have a tendency after you spray it for a while to collapse and you then have to repressurize it by unscrewing it and screwing it back again, making sure that air gets in there and that will ensure that you get a good spray and also that you have pretty good pressure. 
The other thing is you can make this, and this is not a commercial, you guys. I do, I, it was a number of years ago, but right now I just use it because it's a really good product. But this can come out in, um, in kind of a broadcast spray or a more targeted spray that is just more like a stream. So in this case here, and I'm gonna show you some areas where I have used it and where I have not used it. So in this case here, I'm gonna use it even though this is Columbine right here and this is Poannua, and then there's just some other little miscellaneous kind of weeds in here. I'm gonna spray these. Now, I also found from experience that you really don't want to do this when there is any amount of wind at all, because you don't any, want any residual spray to go and affect your other plantings, no matter how large or how small they are. So make sure that you do this on a windless day like today. And also, I found it beneficial to have something here to be kind of a barrier between things that I absolutely want to kill and things I don't want to kill and I certainly feel that I don't want to use this over enthusiastically I don't want to overdo it with this vinegar spray because it is non-selective but I definitely find it to be superior to using something like Roundup which is also non-selective so over here I, and, and by the way, any plant that's growing where you don't want it is really a weed. So I am just going to give this a shot. Now, according to the directions, it tells me that I should do this on a day when it's going to be very hot or pretty hot. And I don't want to overwater it for 24 hours after I spray. And by the way, it does not in any way harm my turf. I was now, about to say that. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't harm the turf. And and this is particularly effective. Some of these would be very easy to remove if the soil was wet, if it had just rained, but it hasn't rained in a while. See how careful I am being of not overshooting. These are some of those violets. There's some clover. So I'm just being careful about that. These are small, some of these are small little red bud trees and I just don't want these growing in this area. Things like this that are growing up next to plants I want to bloom, I'll just pull out. So let's go to another area, Stuart. And by the way, if you don't want to use this battery operated Centurion sprayer, you can get a very inexpensive pressurized version like this. I got this at a home goods store. Maybe it was even a dollar store, I can't remember, or Home Depot, someplace like that, Walmart. I'm sure you could get one online. Um, but that does require a little bit more maintenance. Now I want to show you some areas that I've already sprayed. I sprayed these yesterday and within 30 minutes all of this Mazes Reptans, which is the ground cover that for me can be a little bit overly enthusiastic, overly aggressive, within 30 minutes after the sun had penetrated it and it was in full sun, it was dead, really most sincerely dead. No second application will be necessary. And then all I'll have to do is come back in here and slough off the dead and reapply some gravel. So it's particularly good also on what I think of as real low growing weeds. So I'm gonna be very careful that I in no way have any spray that I'm going to overshoot to get on my boxwood. So it's really beneficial on these that grow within compacted soil. Okay, now I wanna come over, oh, and it's great for clover. It is just great for clover because I find clover difficult to eradicate. Again, 
I'm not having to use Roundup, and I'm only doing this where I absolutely have to have it. And it, it's kind of, it gives me kind of a rush because, <laughs> because it's just immediately effective. Now I want you to come over here. I'm sorry, this is in full sun. But it does show how powerful it can be. But it also demonstrates how really, I guess, careful you need to be in where you spray and where you don't. Very selective. So I have, I can't, what did Carrie call this the other day? So this is an interesting little factoid. Um, Carrie, who helps me here, she used to live behind me, and she had this weed in her home. It looks like dollar weed. There's also a plant, that uh, a real cultivar that looks like this, that people intentionally grow. She said she even wondered if it somehow transported itself from the block behind me, was carried by the birds, and somehow it found its way into my garden beds. Whatever, I don't really want it to, I really don't want it to spread. It's, if it were more tame, I actually find it to be really attractive. But I have found that it is just really getting a little bit too rambunctious in this area. So Stuart, can you show here where well, I, really see yeah, you can too. really see the difference. So this is where I sprayed it just yesterday, being very careful that I was cautious of the surrounding plants but you can see here I don't particularly care about this because it's not growing where I want it to be but this is a Rudbeckia uh, black-eyed Susan that's coming up in here and it also it, see how it damaged that foliage yep. okay so you want to be very very careful and very discriminating about where you spray but here so that shows the demarcation between what I sprayed and see how it was great for in between those bricks. But you can also see what it did, how some of this was when I was not using a piece of cardboard, how some of that residual spray got on that bulb foliage. So over here, I'm going to be a little bit more cautious. I am doing this on a sunny, hot day with not a breath of wind. And what I have found is this will be fairly, it's fairly easy to slough off once all of it dries. And like I say, the scent of this is pretty powerful. Stuart, can you smell it? I can. Even Stuart lost his, when he had COVID, he lost his sense of smell. But it's coming back. So this is the kind of application that it is perfect for. And even if, it, if I can't remove it by sloughing it off immediately, just foot traffic over time in this area, it will dry and go away. Now I can also use it on other, what I consider to be really vexing plants. So for that, let's go back into the studio or back into the potage. Stuart, you can see here where I have killed out some weeds and I'm just going to replenish that with gravel. But come back in here, because this is another very difficult thing to eradicate back in the potage. And you may find it difficult to eradicate too. And this is an experiment I have not heretofore tried. So here's some more of this weed and some clover. I'm going to protect my Mondo grass. And let me tell you, if I tried to pull this, these weeds, it would be very difficult to do so. Now here's some blessed shade, Stuart. Huh? Oh, yes. Okay. Got all of these weeds coming up in here. I can't remember the name of this. If you do, there's another question of the day for you. What's the name of this weed? It escapes me. I need to use my plant ID app to identify it. But another plant that is really irksome to me is just chives that tend to go absolutely everywhere. So I have not tried it on chives, 
but I want to kill it by the root zone. I also want to get rid of all of these low growing weeds in this area. Again, I'm doing this on a day where there is no wind whatsoever. So I don't want to damage my boxwood. Let's see. And I will let you know how effective this is in getting rid of not only these weeds, which I already know it's efficacious for, but also for those chives. And you can see how I am making very quick work of just going through the entirety of this path. to remove these before they get to be problematic. Stuart, do you see why this is very gratifying? Mm -hmm. And this is a pleasure to use. Well, it, see it. It's in fact called button pushing too. It's fun to push a button. Yes, yes. <laughs> it makes me like I'm a, a Jedi. <laughs> I'm a garden Jedi. You are a garden Jedi. I am a, I'm a garden <laughs> Jedi. <laughs> Never thought about that. Just, I, I'm a garden jet, I want to be. I'm running into stuff over here. Where am I running okay. Don't do that, Stuart. Okay. Now, how long did that take me Not very long. from there to here to completely remove these weeds? Not very long. It didn't take me any time at all. Of course, I have to factor in the amount of time it took me to mix up this magical elixir. But I'm happy I finally tried it. I am thrilled with the results. It will also, I'm, I'm anxious to try some of this vinegar in other areas of my home to clean up areas that smell kind of mildewy, maybe underneath my kitchen sink. Um, I'll try some of those applications and let you know as well. I'll put a link to where you can get this. And again, I, it, we have to be very cautious using any of these non-specific sprays. That's hard to say. Non-specific sprays, but nevertheless, I also think that it is far superior to using Roundup. Oh, there's one other thing I really want to try, Stuart, and we'll end on this note. When you've got volunteer trees like this, oh, a, whole tree. a whole tree, or look in there, I've got some of that obnoxious trumpet vine that is coming over that way, but I'm going to have to be careful. Look here, Stuart. How are we going to do this? Okay, I'm going to contort myself, and look, I'm going to sh demonstrate on this. People might be able to see it. Can you see that I'm spraying this trumpet vine? Kind of, yeah, actually. <laughs> kind of? Well, I can now, yeah. It's just okay. there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff around here. But nevertheless, right. this is where stuff grows, yeah. is where there's a lot of stuff. And I'll be also anxious to see if I have to completely coat the plant to get oh, for, it. That's what, that was my thought. Yeah, for a tree, could you just spray the base? Or yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not sure. We shall see, and we will come back. Because I have a lot of those in my front yard. I think it's a... Let me just kind of... It's an oak tree, so there's lots of I think it may just up. damage the part that you sprayed. But I'm going to try it on that trumpet vine, and we will come back. Now, other weeds like this here, this little bit of clover that's sticking up and is just waiting for me to pull it, that is not a problem. It's the ones that are lower growing, difficult to remove, and difficult to get the root system. So, again, make sure to answer my question of the day. Have you ever tried it? If you have, what strength is it? And also let me know what your results are. The other thing is, Stuart and I wanted to let you know, if you want to send pictures for us to post in our community tab of projects that you've been working on or plantings that you have done, then send them to support at lindavotter.com. 
and because there's not really another way you can send me images easily. That's our preferred method. So send them to support at lindavotter.com and we will try to post those on the community tab at least once a week. And the other thing is, is if you enjoy this channel and you find it valuable, if you're an experienced gardener or a new gardener, then please subscribe and tell others to subscribe. So have a great Sunday. Thanks for hanging in there. And I hope lots of you are going to be joining us or have joined us depending on what time this airs for our YouTube Live tomorrow on Sunday at two or today at two. So, okay, I think I finally got that right. Uh, you'll get a notification. You guys have a great weekend. Well, here you go. If you've held on this long, here is your outfit of the day, starting with the tortoise version of my favorite blue light and reading glasses. And boy, do I need to clean these. <laughs> but I love these. And again, I like them because they sit on my head so well, so I don't lose them. My earrings are, I love these acrylic hoops. I love hoops in general. I got these at Walmart several years ago, and I really like them. I think they're really summery. And by the way, they're not heavy. Uh, my top came from online. It's just an inexpensive cotton top, but I like the fact that it's a little bit shorter, that it ties at the waist, and it's great if you are wearing high-waisted jeans, which, or high-waisted wasted pants in general, which I have started doing a lot more. And this is the pair of linen pants with pockets that I got at Target. I think I had these on for the video yesterday. I've got them on today. My belt has a oh, kind of a um, preppy vibe to it. And I got this, I'm not sure where. I've had it for so long. And then I have my same cloud sandals, my oversized cloud sandals on that I got um, online too. And we will try to remember to put links to all of these things. Stuart, have I forgotten anything? Okay, there you go, there's your outfit of the day.